We're coming to you tonight from the Sanford Dam on the eve of the anniversary of one of the worst disasters to hit our area in decades. Good evening, everyone. I'm David Custer. We'll have eight others that were shot. Breaking news tonight, three students are dead and eight others injured after a school shooting at Oxford High School this afternoon. The Oakland County Sheriff says the suspect, a 15-year-old student at the school, fired multiple shots with a semi-automatic handgun, then surrendered to arriving deputies. Now, an update from law enforcement was scheduled for 10 o'clock tonight. Now, we are told it's going to be held at the Oakland County Sheriff's Office. That's in Pontiac. Now, updates were held in Oxford this afternoon, and Governor Gretchen Whitmer was on scene at 5 and became emotional when talking about this shooting. I represent the 7th District of Michigan. His name was familiar to just about anyone who lived in mid-Michigan, but today, former longtime Congressman Dan Kildee died at the age of 92. I'm David Custer in downtown Flint, Kildee's hometown, and one of several communities he served for decades. Kildee was the son of an assembly worker at Buick, and he spent more than half his life in service to his constituents, beginning in Lansing before heading to Washington, D.C. His nephew, his successor, Congressman Dan Kildee is sharing his personal thoughts about the man most of us only knew from a distance. What are you going to miss most about your uncle? His sense of humor. The U.S. Preventative Services Task Force is changing who it considers to be high risk by changing who can get screened. You no longer have to be age 55. You can get screened now at age 50. Meg, it's still hard to believe how much has changed in the last year. One of the major factors of what caused all of that change, the failure of the Edenville Dam. It caused Wixom Lake to drain dry and it sent a tidal wave of water heading south. TV5's Kendall Keys spoke with residents in Edenville to find out how they're recovering one year later. One foot in between. Taking a simple step. step there. Worthy of praise. All right, good job. Because each one a milestone. Next step. On a path forward for 20-year-old Rebecca Cottle. It's been slower just because I can remember how it was before this happened. Coddle's on a fast track to rebuild. Every day she catches a glimpse of Beck, the woman she once was. It's just frustrating, but I have to realize that my future isn't going to look like my past. Her future, living life after a severe brain injury. She was hit by a car on New Year's Day while fleeing to safety after a car crash on an Ann Arbor highway. It nearly took her life, erasing everything she knew. Mom has a picture of me with the trach in, and um, I'm, to me, it's just like that happened to someone else because I can't remember it. But her parents remember the nightmare all too well. 20 days in intensive care at U of M Medical Center, multiple skull fractures, broken ribs, a punctured lung. I would scream, cry, pray, cry, reset. Go a few hours, do it again, reset. We came really close to not being able to talk to her again. And even though she made it through the most critical hours, days felt like months. Her recovery painstakingly slow and still not a single word out of Beck's mouth. Doctors eventually transferred her to the Mary Freebed Rehabilitation Center in Grand Rapids. And that's when Beck's parents say everything changed. Just 10 days into her intense rehab, a surprise. And I just, out of the, you know, out of the blue, asked her, you know, Beck, let's stand up, let's let's sit on the mat table here. And at that point, without delay, she stood right up. A rare development, not usually seen in the recovery of someone with her type of brain trauma. But Beck wasn't done. What followed, she opened her mouth and called out for her mom. It's very emotional, very emotional to see her you know, daughter almost dead to, you know, doing things that you seem, you know, you feel that should be just, you know, Miles very away. easy. Beck walked out of Mary Freebed to a standing ovation, resolute to regaining her independence. Nice. Is that too much from that arm? No? Okay. I'm determined to get back as close as I can to normal. Beck's back home, recovering <laughs> under the watchful eye of mom and dad. Are they? Yeah. 
for rehab just a few hours a week at Covenant in Saginaw. Big step. There you go. Yep. She's very young and motivated. She's ready to get back to where she was. And she's not sad. She can only dream about the one thing she misses most. It actually brought a smile to her face when she told me, because Beck knows it's only a matter of time before she will turn that dream into reality. At night, I would listen to music in my headphones and then just dance. And now I can't do that. The things that are important are right in front of your face that you take for granted. Hold what you have and appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Because it could have went differently. Look forward, don't look back, because what you used to be able to do might not be what you can do now. And I think all the change is now I'm gonna go forward being more grateful for the life I have. <laughs> when little Dolly came into her mom's life. He fell down. He fell down. She believed it was nothing short of a miracle. I love you. I was told I would never have kids because of my past trauma. Years of sexual abuse as a child, in and out of foster homes. The odds were against Rochella Smith, let alone one day having a child of her own. She'll tell me she loves me or come give me kisses. Out came my kisses. A mother's love, one Rochella longed for as a child, but never really experienced. Her mom signed off her rights to her when she was just a young girl. I was a scared little girl that loved my mom and didn't understand why the things that were happening were happening. At age 11, with no one to call mom and dad, Rochella found her way here on the front steps of an orphanage. They saw that I was a scared little girl and they didn't hold that against me. You know, they, they could have just locked me in a room and said heck with it, you know, but they didn't, you know, they got me the therapy that I needed. When the kids come here, you know, they all come from different backgrounds, but no matter where they come from and what their story is, we become a family. Just one person or volunteer at the Whaley Children's Center can change a child's life. CEO Mindy Williams says 42 kids a year, like Rochella, are given basic necessities like food and shelter, but it's the everlasting bonds they form that stay with them when they leave. When I was all out on my own, I would just feel like I was getting under the water and somebody would come along and be there for me. I'm outside Whaley Children's Center right now. Rochella just pulled up. I had her come here because she has no idea what's in store. She told me there was someone that was instrumental in helping her when she was here, so I brought her here today to surprise her. I feel like the little kid running up to her <sighs> to thank her for what she's done for me. <laughs> I didn't know you'd be here. <laughs> oh, I almost didn't recognize you. She was like, do you want to go to church with me? And then I would go to church with her every Sunday after that. And that was a huge thing because I couldn't always go to church. Our plan was to figure out a way that we could fellowship at a church, so we found a local church. And on Sundays when I worked, we would get up early in the morning and we really would go and praise God together. Oh, so beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. I miss you. I miss you too, baby. I realized later on in life that they were so important to me and they weren't the enemies that my little girl brain said they were. After seeing that reunion, my heart is exploding. It always makes me so happy to see kids that come back and kind of tell their story and just to see that and feel the genuine love that they both have for each other. It's, it's definitely overwhelming. You'll often find Rochella dropping off donations to Whaley, setting an example for little Dolly, hoping one day she'll understand that if her mom hadn't been dropped off on these steps, their story may have never been told. Giving the bunny for the baby. Giving the bunny to the baby. If I can make it through everything I made it through then, I shouldn't give up now because now it's so beautiful. These are the struggles I wanted. I got you. Now's not the time for giving up anymore. <laughs> Guys, I don't 